Alhaji Ahmed Sullivan, welcome to the show. Once again, good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, it's interesting times for the All Progressive Congress, especially in relations to the forthcoming elections in Anambra states. Now, and it's also been from the perspective of the former Minister of Labor and Employment, Christine Gige, who has talked about the dominance of ABGA in Anambra state and the prospects of having APC uh, take over Anambra state, if I am allowed to borrow from his words. Yes. Now, you would recall in May that the State House of Assembly also considered a bill for the constitution of the state electoral commission in Anambra state just for the conversations on local government autonomy to also gain grounds is the crucial need for the elections to be seen to be free and fair yes. uh, let's speak it from the perspective of the former minister's comments and then we'll come to local government autonomy how much of a chance does apc have going into 2025 in terms of wrestling Anambra state away from the grip of abga well, once again, good morning, Nigeria. Uh, APC has always been a party to beat ever since the formation of the party in 2013 down to 20 down to date. Uh, in terms of the uh, Southeast Nigeria in particular, you know, they are dominant of uh, Abgas uh, Alliance. But however, APC, I believe, has equally proved a deep point of a uh, sense and uh, belonging which will give them t if the people so wish the opportunity to feel government at the center so considering the fact that in nigeria today for you to have total development within the round of your within the state you must equally have a direct link with the center and the party that can only give them that direct link is apc so i do believe that apc have a chance to win if all stick actor from the party do the needful because the challenge they always have is lack of this cohesion lack of understanding lack of agreement within themselves within the stakeholder of the party in the state or in the southeast nigeria in particular coming together to see the common goal of interest where give and take will be put on table and discussed but most of the time, they always want to show their muzzle, how powerful individually they are. And going to election, you don't go individually, you must go collectively for you to win. Mm. Now, now, the elders, um, the APC Elders Forum, you know, has uh, come together in Anambra State and they are saying that uh, all political parties should stick to zoning as agreed. Are we going to see that if, if this has to be the case in 2025, are we seeing the party uh, being able to produce uh, prominent leaders that could beat Abga in this game? Well, coming to issue of zoning in Anambra State, is, it is going to be a bit difficult considering the fact that the party itself has never ruled at the state level. So if you are saying you should zone, you should be zoning, uh, which part of the state you are going to see that should be zoning? I think for now, you should go on popular candidate, an acceptable candidate, irrespective of the zone that is coming from. I think that will really help the party in Anambra State. But issue of zoning on a general note, that is one of the cardinal points of uh, APC when it was formed in 2013. Uh, some of us who have been with the party right from the inception of uh, it formation coming from the angle of maybe CPC, ACN, uh, some arm of APGA, NPP, and so on and so forth. So one of the key factor that brought all of us together is to ensure that the party has to work with inclusivity, bringing all Nigerian on board. Let all Nigeria feel inclusive, feel important, and the only way you can do that is by zoning. So zoning is one of the key points of forming APC in 2015. But it's quite unfortunate that uh, over time, interests have at which that, based on who is who within the political party at the state level or federal level. If now, not, now, I'll have you have about let's discuss interest from this perspective as well. In Anambra State, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even the former governor, Christine Gige, has mm -hmm. admitted that there are seemingly two factions of APC in Anambra State. Now, he's talked about newcomers who only joined in 2021, mm. as opposed to some old comers in the state who have been with APC right from its inception. Mm. Do you perceive these two factions of the APC in Anambra state as one of the not-too-good outcomes in terms of having a cohesive unit to go into that election? 
You see, one thing with politics that I do understand is it has always been things of interest. Him speaking from the angle of his own interest, and the newcomers are equally looking at the angle of their interest. And they will tell you that they all joined the party because of interest. So what is most important is looking at the ball. How do we score the goal? Hmm. It is not who scored the goal that matter now. It's how do we score the goal. It is after you win, then you can now bring issue of individual interest to the table. And there you have, I think, an elephant meat on the table that everybody will participate. But for now, you have nothing. You are talking of interest. Interest or what? So I do... I will advise, if I have an opportunity to advise them or to see them, I will advise. For now, issue of individualism should be taken away off the table. It should be issue of collective interest. How do we win the election? And who is the popular candidate? Who is the acceptable candidate? It is not how long you have been in the party or how far. Yes, it matters. But sometimes, again, do we have what it takes? for the people to have confidence in you. And one of the challenges I have seen over time within our political environment, why we continue to have these challenges, is that Nigerians themselves are educated, but they are not informed. One thing is to go to school. One thing is to understand why you go to school. One thing is, not, is to know how to read and write. And one thing is to be informed. Are we truly informed? And that is why we always have challenges in selecting or electing leaders that will represent us. So the so-called party stakeholders, irrespective of party, I'm now going outside my own party as APC now, irrespective, it has always been a challenge of, if it is not me, it shouldn't be any other person. And this me, is one of the major problems we are having in Nigeria today. Everybody look at me, and me, and after me. So what happened to the next? So, and we say democracy is a government of the people, by the people. But are we truly feeling, seeing the government of the people for our own interests? Or we are seeing the government of us by other people's interests? So it is only when we all come together, then this issue of individualism will now start going down. And it cuts across all party lines. But APC, we have a formula when this party was forming in 2013. And I believe we need to go back to the drawing board. Where do we start getting it wrong? Who is misleading us? Why are we not leading the people as we ought to? If you look at our acceptability, uh, our acceptability in 2015 is higher than 2019. 2019 is higher than 2023. Something is going wrong. And that is where we keep on having challenge. Because for some of us who will look at issue and say the way it is, we have always been. Because I believe issue of loyalty, it is ability to see the truth and say the truth. It's ability to tell the leaders where they are wrong, they are wrong. Where they are right, they are right. Not always oppressing us. And this is why we continue to misfire ourselves and misleading. And the acceptability is going down. So we need to come back to drawing board, do the needful. Issue of zoning, it should be the issue of APC from up to down. Zoning, that is the cardinal point of forming this party. And we shouldn't deviate from that. So that everybody will feel important or feel among. Instead of constant dragging. And the truth is, if you look at what is on the table, if we do the needful, we have enough that will reach everybody. But because we are not doing the needful, that is why I keep on slimming. Now talking about this, top to bottom approach and inclusivity the third year of government in anambra state in the last 10 years has not had a local government election mm. now for the first time in a decade the anambra state house of assembly has also considered a bill to allow for the constituting of the state electoral commission to conduct the affairs of his local government election now the top as it were the federal government has also 
back this move by clamoring for local government autonomy? Could it have come at a better time? When you see it, clamoring for local government autonomy is surprising to me. Because apparently in 36 states, 24, 24 are with caretaker committees. The tier of local government autonomy has been there since 1999. Is it seen to be functional? That's that the is point. the problem. It's implementation. And why is it not being implemented? Because you are not here to look the other way. See, the fact is, as long as we continue to ignore or undermine the development, the progress of local government, we will continue to face with this issue of insecurity, issue of poverty, issue of unemployment. Every one of us, including the president, including those governors, they are all from local government, they are all from wards, and they are from all from communities. So, why are we finding it difficult to do the needful? Even when the constitution said that you should do it. And why is it that we Nigerian people are looking the other way? And that is why I said one of our major problems is lack of being informed for our own self enlightened interest. And as long as we choose not to be informed, we will continue to suffer this. I don't know how many calls you do receive from your members of your community on a daily basis seeking for assistance, seeking for maybe school fees, school fees mm. seeking for maybe how to basic, basic, basic things. Basic thing on a daily basis. And yet we are still looking the other way that does not consign us. Come on guys. This is a fight that all Nigerians should see it as their fight. This should be a call that should concern all of us as Nigerians. There is no one of us should be more powerful than all of us. The governors see themselves today so powerful because we allow them to be. They take everything from us and yet they create pain to us and they ask us to wait for our own time. Well, well, so we are dead. So the local government autonomy or election, it should be, it shouldn't be a kind of privilege. It's a right of the local government because the constitution recognizes that. And I'm using this opportunity to call on all our consigned lawyers who believe or think that they are learned to lead us in this struggle, in this fight, the local government must be given full autonomy so that we we'll start now following what comes to our local government. It will be easy. Even the secondary school uh, uh, person can easily go to local government and say, I heard that so much has come to, and so so my community road has not been constructed or has not been, has not, has, has not been put in order. So, if the federal government is releasing it, why the state are not releasing it? And that is why, you see, they have so much money, they can decide the fate of millions of Nigerians on a daily basis. So, I believe we are still on there anyway. Uh, APC zoning, but now I think we are yeah. automatically <laughs> moving yeah. to. Yes. Because of the, 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 the kind of uh, comparing issue on before us. Mm. Now, it's even more compelling because the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, still on the issue of local government autonomy, <coughs> was invited to look into the affair of the caretaker committees that were set up in 21 local government areas in Anambra State in the last 10 years, where there are also allegations thrown across the floor that even the allocations are supposed to go to the 30 of government in Anambra State in over a decade it's have been largely me. misappropriated. Is you there, Anambra? Tell me. Can you point to me one particular local government or state in Nigeria. in Nigeria today that can boldly say that the exact amount that was released to its local government from the FAC allocation has been given to the local government? Tell me which one since 1999 it did. But during the military era, was it that? 
Was it like that? So there are things that we need to question individually. Because I believe you pay tax through your salary mm. or through what you buy on a daily basis. You call it pay tax. I pay tax. So why are we showing less concern with our tax? So please, I once again want to see it. As long as we continue to look the other way as Nigerian, we will continue to bear the pain and our children will bear it on and the children of our children will bear it on. Is it not a cause on us? Are these factors natural? No. These people, or uh, we the politicians, sorry, I'm not saying these people because I'm also included. We the politicians, we won't lie to any Nigeria if we say we don't know every communities across the board. If we don't know it, we have a coordinator that knows it. Even if the coordinator doesn't know the community, he has another coordinator that knows it. So we all go down either every four, four years or three, three years to go and deceive them. And after that, we see it. See you next in the next four years. Again. I, I like the fact that you've included yourself in this dialogue. And for those <laughs> who are watching at home, just joining us, Alhaji Ahmed Suleiman is uh, the convener APC Not Central Progressive Forum. And in the course of our discourse this morning, we've looked at it from the angle of three prominent issues in the news. Firstly, the elections come 2025 in Anambra State, where the former governor, His Excellency Christine Gigay, has talked about the need for the All Progressive Congress APC to be able to wrestle the state away from the grip of ABGA that has enjoyed the leadership of the state in the last 10 years. It is coming at a crucial time when the anti-graft agency in the EFCC has been invited to take a look at the books of 21 local government areas in Anambra state who have had caretaker committees saddle their affairs, thereby allegations of misappropriation of allocations from FAC in a time when there's been increased FAC allocations to states. Now it is hinged on the debates for if elections can be conducted and allowed to be manned by the State Electoral Resident Commission in Anambra State. And much like Alaji Ahmed Suleiman has said, Anambra is just but one state in many in Nigeria where they can't say that there is local government autonomy since caretaker committee chairmen saddle the affair. He has included himself in the political class of those who take promises, campaigns to citizens, and at hmm. the end of four, three years, people look at it and say, the ruling class, your life seems to be better. It's coming at a time, let's also digress, where there have been debates, the Senate president has come to dispel the rumors concerning the presidential jet. But uh, some Nigerians have looked at the books and saying, is there any need to run away from this discussion? Shouldn't our presidency have, much like they have in the US, an Air Force One, other than we're leasing jets and spending money on such jets? It's also coming at a time when, sadly, VPs in Africa have lost their life on jets that have been said to be some malfunctioning while in transit. This is coming at a time when we're saying, yes, we have representatives, we elected into office, but can some premium be placed on their life and would I call it the heaviness of the crown that it takes to saddle the affairs of Nigeria? So let's just touch on that presidential fleet debate before we come back to other issues bordering on elections. What's your take on it? At a time when uh, the National Assembly has been put under scrutiny, for some perceived positions on the need to get a presidential fleet, at least for His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Metinibu. Well, <clears throat> issue of uh, life and death is very important. It should be a concern for all of us. We have elected Mr. President and his vice to lead us in the next four years. And whatever we can do to protect that vote, that life, and keep our own part of the promises of giving him four years, for him to deliver as expected in the next four years, is very important. And we cannot equally take away the fact that the president needs to move around, the vice president needs to move around. So if his life will be at risk for whatever reasons. 
it is our duty, it is our right as Nigeria to ensure that we avoid that, we protect him as long as we want him to equally protect us. He is our president. So if the presidential jet are malfunctioning and the mechanics or the engineers or the technical know-how say that he need to be replaced. He should be replaced. But keeping, because the last time I, I check, I got to know that we have about six presidential jets and four helicopters, bringing the total of ten. So if out of these six are becoming obsolete, then it should be discarded and replaced instead of keeping them and later on become a waste. Yeah, but, but why do you think Nigerians almost feel like if those things are purchased, it ends with this administration? Would it be, would it be a good investment into the future president after President Bola Metinibu? Of course. Uh, I don't think the last two or three presidents that came on board, they were the ones that purchased uh, those jets. They were there before them. Mm -hmm. And what is the last palm of a jet? How many years is supposed to serve at that premium level? So these are issues that we need to be looked at. And if it has expired or it has reached its elastic limit, uh, there is no point of hesitation to replace it. It should be replaced. But it should be done in a manner of fairness, equity and justice. In a manner that Nigerians are well considered. Not for only having them as numbers, but having them for a purpose. I fully supported that. If having them for a purpose is the need, let us have it. But if having them as number, okay, during my time I acquired a new jet for Nigeria, there is no need for that. But protecting Mr. President is paramount to all of us. It should be a concern of all Nigeria. At least this conversation is coming at a time when even the refurbished residence of the <coughs> vice president has now been tailored towards the current vice president and not made as a project that other vice presidents coming after him would enjoy. It almost feels as though because it's the APC government, anything done now is looked at it from the perspective of, oh, the previous administration was also APC as well, and that's why there is more priority on the office of the president and the vice. Do you think this is a misguided way of thinking, which we see peddled across social media? You see, one of the major problems we have in Nigeria today is misinformation and lack of proper information from the source or not carrying Nigerians alongside of every major decision taking. Because if you don't do that, you are now creating a room for the fifth columnist to trigger up the polity, the system for their own selfish interests. Uh, if not that, uh, government you see, continue things. These people will come and go as long as we all live or Nigeria remain a sovereignty. Another president will come. Some years back, it was the government of PDP. Now it's government of APC. And yes, party or leadership must be produced through a party platform. Mm. But I think the concern should be less about the platform. The concern should be more on governance. So, one of the challenges we keep on facing is because it's not my party, nothing good will ever come out of it. And because it's my party, everything that goes is okay. We should be able to delete that out of our daily progress if we really want to move forward as Nigeria.